Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. And I want to thank Gail and Lisa mailed me checks at Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. That's P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. You can also donate on a one-time basis electronically at support.greatdetectives.net, or you can become one of our ongoing Patreon contributors at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Now, also, I want to let you know, if you've listened to this program for any length of time, you know that I also do a podcast of Superman Old Time Radio. And this evening, I will be uploading the last of the serialized episodes of Superman. However, we will be moving to self-contained half-hour stories. So if the whole serialized story thing isn't really for you, you may want to uh, search for the Old Time Radio Superman Show and starting next Monday evening, we'll be bringing one half hour per week until we're done, which will be a few months yet. And also, if you weren't aware of the series, you can check through the archives. That's the Old Time Radio Superman Show. Now it's time for today's episode of Richard Diamond, the original air date, March the 16th, 1951. And this one is Monsieur Beauchamp. transcribed is Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Being a private detective is like ordering stew in a cheap restaurant. You never know what you're getting until it's too late. It was that way the other morning. I was sitting in my office practicing curtain speeches to my creditors when she came in. She was wearing a casual item that must have caused a sharp dip at the mink population. When she reached my desk, she stopped and her perfume kept moving. She probably noticed the glassy look reaching my eyes because she said, Does my perfume bother you, Mr. Diamond? Well, no, no, not at all. My fangs always show like this. <laughs> Le joie. It carries a special guarantee. Well, I won't ask for what. Uh, won't you sit down, Miss... Uh... Not Miss, just Yvonne. It's not my real name, but I find it has a better effect on the trade. The trade? Cosmetics. Perfumes, facial creams, mud packs. Mm. I manufacture them. Mm. Mostly for women, but I have a lot of male customers. I bet you do. Unfortunately, I've just bought a magnum of shaving lotion myself. Oh, don't be silly, Mr. Diamond. I didn't come here to sell you anything. I'm sure you wouldn't have any need for my products. Uh, we'll save that debate for later. Well, I'll be brief. I'm a woman who likes to come to the point. I can see that. How would a $200 fee sound to you? Like a mirage, but beautiful. Well, here you are. 100 now, the rest when you finish the job. Well, far be it for me to hesitate over money, especially that nice, luxurious shade of green, but don't you think oh, that... Of course, you want to know what you have to do. Mm, it would help. It's very simple. This afternoon, the Ile de France docks in New York. On the ship will be a man named Bouchon. One of your customers? Or is this social? Monsieur Bouchon has developed a wonderful new face cream. He's arranged for me to have the exclusive American rights. Well, that's fine. Where do I come in? Your job starts at seven tonight. All you do is pick up the sample from Monsieur Bouchon at his hotel and bring it to me. Oh, I see. Uh, do you mind if I look at your legs? Well, no. But I thought we were talking business. We are. Mm-hmm. Well, you've got nice legs, Ivan. They take me where I want to go. Well, what keeps them from taking you to Bouchon's hotel? You mean pick up the sample myself? I was sure you'd ask that. Well, I did. You don't know the cosmetic industry, Mr. Diamond. 
My competitors would do anything to get hold of that face cream. They know you expect Bouchon? Only one of them. A ruthless man. Mm. Does he have a name or just a disposition? Robert Mockler. He owns the Venus Beauty Enterprises. And you think he might follow you or take the sample away before you can start to manufacture? So you're paying me $200 to protect it. Oh, Mr. Diamond, I'm going to like you. You're so understanding. Oh, $100 bills make me that way. I'll expect you tonight around 7.30. My job's over when I deliver the sample to you, is that it? Yes. But uh, don't make any plans for the rest of the evening. There's a new perfume I want to try out. She gave me her address in the name of Bouchon's hotel. Then she walked to the door with a motion cats spend years trying to learn. I sat there a while, letting my head clear and my temperature sink to a mere galloping fever. I had a bite of lunch, strolled around most of the afternoon doing things people do to kill time in New York. And it was about four when I climbed the stairs and walked down the hall to my apartment. Au clair de la lune, mon ami Poirot, Oh, she was too old for that anyway. Hey, what is this? Hello, Diamond. Oh, didn't you knock? Or did you think this was an L station? I knocked, nobody answered. I came in. Now you can go out. How much did she pay you? Who? Yvonne. How much did she pay you to get that face cream sample? I'll bet a mud pack to a permanent your name's Mockler. Yeah. Venus Beauty Enterprises. I'll double what she paid you. Hmm. You want that face cream pretty bad, huh? Bring it to me, huh, Diamond? Are you that interested in cosmetics? It's a business. Do I get that sample? No. Be nice, Diamond. So I can be nice. Well, it'll be a strain for both of us. Triple. I'll give you three times what she paid. Mm -mm. And a bonus on the side. Why don't you get it yourself? Think I'd be here if I knew where Bouchon was? That door, Mr. Mockler, leads to the hall. Use it. I ask you to be nice. Once. The second time, I don't ask. You heard me. Ow. Ow. You take your hands off me. I'm just being nice. <coughs> You dirty... Get up. And then get out. All right, Diamond. I'm leaving. You take a hint nicely. I won't forget this. I wouldn't want you to. You just lost yourself a chunk of cash, Diamond. I'm not a very good businessman. It's a habit with me. Well, it's too bad. Might have helped pay the bill. What bill? The Undertaker. Funerals run high these days. He stomped to the door, his face twisted with some private rage that had just become public and left. When face cream got to be that important, it was time for Richard Diamond to start investigating the cosmetic business. I took a shower, dressed neatly in my most continental fashion, and taxied off to visit Monsieur Beauchamp. He was staying at a small hotel in the East 70s, one of those places where the doorman is dressed like an admiral in the Swiss Navy. I ignored the doorman and waded through miles of plush carpet until I found Beauchamp's suite. I pushed the buzzer, and when the door opened... I was standing in front of the biggest female this side of a ringing brother's tent. You want something, gentlemen? Uh, Monsieur Bouchon, is he in? Who you been, gentlemen? Uh, Richard Diamond. Come in. Well, what's the matter? Is my tie on crooked? Please. Well, the way you're looking at me, maybe my nose is shiny. It's better when you've been really Richard Diamond. Because, gentlemen... If you know Ben Richard Diamond, they Ben break your bones. One bone by one bone. You see, gentlemen? I'm afraid I do. But now if you'll just... Ah, uh... oh, Monsieur Diamond! Uh, Monsieur Bouchon, I hope. Ah, oh, name of punctuality, Monsieur Diamond. Exactly on time. I kiss you on one cheek. I kiss you on cheek number two. We can stop it right there. Ah, uh, let me regard you. Ah, we. Oui. It is as if one say you will be so young, so handsome, so virile. I feel like a midget next to your watchdog here. Watchdog? Je ne comprends pas. Ah, ah, oui, Bertha. She is my masseuse. She makes uh, new muscles as the old. And vice versa on occasion, I suppose. Regard her, Monsieur Diamond. Name of a Swedish smug as bird. Is she not magnifique? Yeah, spellbinding. Now, about that sample I'm supposed to pick up. Ah, but of course, of course, Bertha. Police! In the boudoir, Bertha. There is a jar on the bed, next to my chartreuse dressing gown. Bring it. Yeah, gentlemen. 
I, I wish to tell you, Monsieur Diamond, how pleasant it is to be back in your New York once more. What a truly magnifique city she is to visit. But you wouldn't want to live here. Name of a fortune teller, but you are psychic. How did you know I would say that? I've been hanging around the tourist bureau. I do not understand, but I think you are being droll. <laughs> you would have a tiny brandy with me. Some uh, logis du mai, n'est-ce pas? Well, thanks, but I've got a date with a room full of perfume. <sighs> The Yvonne. Naturally, the incomparable Yvonne. Well, I suppose I cannot persuade you to stay. Ah, ah, thank you, Bertha. Please. Here, Monsieur Diamond, is the latest Bouchon creation. That's all? Just this jar? I have worked so hard on this sample. Oui. How I have labored. You will take good care of it, yes? Well, for 200 bucks, I'd tuck it in bed and sing it a lullaby. Ah, oh, but no. No, no. You must not do that. You must make haste and place the sample in the hands of the lovely Yvonne. Any message to go with it? The sample. She will be message enough. Okay, I'll be seeing you. Of a certainty you will, Monsieur Diamond. Of a certainty. I looked back on my way out of the suite. Monsieur Bouchon had an atomizer in each hand, spraying the room with cologne. The expression on his face reminded me of the python who had just swallowed his week's supply of rabbit on the hoof. I snowshoed my way down to the street and started to look for a taxi. I didn't have to look far. Hey, Mac! Huh? Over here, Mac! You looking for a hack? That's right. Hop in. 53 East... Sit down and be nice, Mr. Diamond, or I'll blow your head off. Well, you leave me a limited choice, Mr. Mockley. That's better. Fine work, Willie. Yeah, pretty neat, huh, Mr. Mockley? I'll answer that, Willie. It was neat. Now I'd like to... Uh Uh-uh, Diamond. I thought you were going to be nice. I'll take that gun. You might give me a gold star for trying. We're fixing your gold star right now. My place, Willie. It didn't do any good to tell myself I should have known better. I'd been caught by a trick ten times older than I was. I took a quick look at Mockler's profile just to make sure it was still there. It was. I didn't have to look at his gun. It had found a home between my fourth and fifth rib. We finally pulled up in front of an apartment just off Park Avenue. Mockler herded me across a foyer that might have been cheerful in McKinley's day. He pushed me toward the elevator. All right, get in. Would you mind shifting that gun a bit? My floating ribs run aground. I'll be nice, Diamond. Suits you better than being funny. Well, I was just trying to be pleasant. But if you insist, Don't I... Don't talk so loud. My neighbors are refined. All right, get out. Aren't you making a lot of fuss over nothing? After all, it's only a jar of face cream. You'd be surprised. No kidding. Any drugstore. Shut up. Oh, nice place. It's a place. All right, give me the sample. Just for the record, suppose I say no. You say no, you won't have a record. The sample, Diamond. Get it. My coat pocket. That's right. I I thought, I thought you'd try that. Give me that gun. Okay, right between your pretty blue eyes. His gun caught me a glancing blow on the forehead and I went down. I couldn't have been out for more than a few seconds because when I came to, Mockler was still in the room. I tried to get up, but my body had a will of its own. At the moment, what it wanted most was to rest comfortably on the rug. Mockler didn't notice me. He was too busy trying to get the top off the jar. When he finally did... And now, back to Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Rick. Rick. Rick, come on, boy. Wake up. Oh, oh. Wow, did they say nice things about me, Walt? Who? The preacher. The one who read my funeral service. Oh. This is a hospital, and you're not dead. Oh. 
You mean I've got to go all through that again? Why you're not dead is something I'll never know. What happened? Uh, you tell me, Walt. Well, we got a call an hour ago to come to the apartment of a guy named Mockler. There'd been an explosion. You were stretched out on what was left of the floor. Oh, that potent face cream. Face cream? You sure you're awake, Rick? I'm awake, Al. What about Mockler? Well, he was around the apartment. I might say all around. Oh, so it was a booby trap. Booby trap? What's this all about? Walt, Walt, are those my pants on the chair? Well, what's left of them? Uh, throw them over, will you? Now, wait a minute, Rick. Aren't you going to tell me what's going on? Sure, sure. A Frenchman named Bouchon was trying to blow up a girl named Yvonne with a jar of face cream. That face cream again. Maybe you better stay here a while, huh? Look, Walt, nothing makes sense yet. That's the first sensible thing you've said since you woke up. Give me time to ask a few people some questions. How would it be if I asked him? You wouldn't get the same answers. All right, Rick. We'll give it a try. I'll call you as soon as I've made a visit. Don't wait too long. There's a murder rap crying for a head to fall on. I checked out of the hospital and walked a few blocks to shake the India rubber out of my legs. I knew it wouldn't do any good, but I ducked into a phone booth and called Bouchon's hotel. And as I expected, he'd pulled out a couple of hours before. The manager had no idea where he'd gone. There was only one place left for me to go, and it was a little after ten when Yvonne opened her door for me. I could tell by the quiet music on the radio that she didn't know what had happened. The way she greeted me bolstered up my deduction. Well, hello. Do come in, Mr. Diamond. Thanks. Aren't you afraid of catching cold in that thing? You mean this negligee? I wore it specially for you. I've been waiting a long time. Too long. Hmm. Well, you just missed waiting a lot longer. <laughs> that Monsieur Bouchon... So talkative. He has a few other qualities. Come sit down. Here on the chaise longue. Next to me. Well, I, uh, I hate to make a detour, but let's get the sad news over with first. Oh? Something's gone wrong? Oh, you almost got it. Nothing's gone right. I should have known. Your clothes are... You ought to see what your face cream did to Mockler's clothes. Mockler? Did he get that sample? Uh, he had it for a few minutes, if that's what you mean. Mr. Diamond, if I didn't like you, I'd be very angry. Well, you shouldn't be. When Mockler opened that sample, he got very dead. It was a bomb. I, I, I don't understand. The, the, the face cream Monsieur Bouchon gave you was a bomb? No, not quite, no. The bomb Monsieur gave me was a bomb. Just a minute, Mr. Diamond. Let me turn off this radio. You... You don't know how this upsets me. I know. I was upset myself this evening, violently. Oh, you poor boy. Well, no. Well, that helps. Hand me that bag, please, there on the coffee table. Well, if, if you want a handkerchief... Now, I have what I'm looking for. Here, Mr. Diamond. One hundred dollars. The other half of your fee. No? Oh, does an explanation come of that? I'm sure you'll excuse me until another time. Won't you? Well, when you say it like that, I... I'm sorry. I was so looking forward to... Good night, Mr. Diamond. There were a few reasons why I'd like to have hung around, but I could tell this just wasn't my night. So I left Ivan, called Walt, and told him he could forward the bill for Mockler's murder to Monsieur Bouchon if he could find him. Then I crawled into a little bistro on 53rd Street to relax and count my hundred-dollar bills. I was on my second cup of coffee and third Campbell's cigarette when it came to me. Like the paraphrase of an old song, Bouchon knew that I knew. If he'd been foolish enough to let me be messenger for his booby trap, it was a sense she wouldn't be foolish for very long. As long as I was walking around in one piece, Bouchon could never feel safe. I could have dodged him, maybe for a long time, but I decided it would be better to see him when he wanted to see me. I went home and made myself available. At 11.35, the walls of my room started to shudder when somebody pounded on the door. I didn't have any doubts about who it was. Oh, be careful, will you? It's just mahogany. 
It's only me, gentlemen. Bertha. I couldn't possibly have guessed. Please. Oh, never mind. What do you want? Mansour Bouchon, the Haven, send me. Well, it'll be a tight squeeze, but won't you come in? You come out, gentlemen. Okay, just as soon as I get my coat. You know, Ben, need your coat, gentlemen. Well, it's right over here. You, you come be- now, gentlemen. I will assist your arm. <clears throat> Please. Oh, nothing, nothing. I always thought my arm bent the other way. It's better this way. It's healthy for bones. You come now, gentlemen. Please. She put a little more pressure on my arm and led me down the stairs. She was so clumsy, I could have taken her with a few artful motions, but Bouchon had sent her, and I wanted to see Bouchon. When we reached the street, Berta grabbed my other arm. We made an interesting entrance into a taxi, which took us to a shabby apartment house on Bleecker Street in Greenwich Village. Berta adjusted her half Nelson, and we climbed three flights of stairs. The end of our little pilgrimage was a pair of termite-ridden rooms, which I never would have associated with a fastidious Frenchman. Bouchon was not there, and Berta didn't seem to know what to do with me. Then her eyes lighted up. She angled me across the room, pulled open a door looked at me brightly and said... Is bathroom, gentlemen? Well, thanks. I brushed my teeth this evening. Go in. Where's Bouchon? It's not good. You've been asked questions. Go in. Well, we'll wait out here. It's more comfortable inside. If you know Ben, go inside. I've been glad to assist you. I was ready to argue the point when I looked in the bathroom and saw a table full of bottles and jars. So I let Berta shove me inside and lock the door behind me. Then I walked over to the table. Next to a bottle labeled Valley of Indecision Cologne stood a jar, exactly like the booby trap Bouchon had given me earlier in the evening. I picked it up, decided that forever was a long time to live, and opened it. This time it really was face cream. I poked my fingers around in the jar to see what made it so wonderful. When I pulled them out, things suddenly became a lot clearer. Because just under the top layer of face cream was buried the biggest blue sapphire I had ever seen. I wiped it off and slipped it into my pocket just about the time the outer door opened. Bertha? It was Bouchon. And he didn't waste time starting in on Bertha. Bertha, where is this diamond? You have not brought him. Eh, hey, Bain, bring him. But I do not see him. Eh, hey, Bain, bring him. Lord, where is he? Where is he? Hey, lock him in the bathroom. In the bathroom? Oh, mon Dieu, mon Dieu. Unlock the door. Hey, get the key. I had to do something, and I had to do it fast. I looked around. Then in the bathtub, I saw what I wanted. One of those rubber hoses with a shower attachment that can be pointed in any direction. I turned on the hot water full blast and waited. Monsieur Diamond! Monsieur Bouchon? Mon Dieu, the steam I cannot see! Here I am! Ah! Oh, I am scalded! You have burnt me! Give me that gun! Oh, mon Dieu! Ah, that's right! Now stand back! Gentlemen! All right, Bertha, turn off that water! Oh, I am scalded! Now you'll live! Oh, that was some face cream! Mon Dieu! The sapphire! You have taken it! You won't need it, Bouchon! They'll just take it away from you before they put you in the chair. I persuaded Bouchon, with the help of his gun, which I was holding, to tie a Berta. Then I knotted some bright red French neckties around his hands and feet and surveyed the situation. There was no phone in the apartment. So I locked the two of them in and raced down to a drugstore on the corner. I caught the owner just as he was closing and put in a call to Walt. Then I doubled back to the apartment to keep Bouchon and Berta company. I thought it was funny that the door was open when I had locked it so carefully. I stopped thinking it was funny when I walked through the door straight into the barrel of an ugly automatic. Hello, Mr. Diamond. Well, Ivan. You're just in time. We're going to start a treasure hunt. He has it. He is the one. Monsieur Bouchon seems to think you picked up a sapphire by mistake, Mr. Diamond. Probably in the excitement of the evening. It is true. All what I tell, it is true. You hear what Monsieur Bouchon says. But Monsieur Bouchon tried to kill me tonight. Maybe he also lies. No, 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 he took it. Name of a thief. Oh, do be quiet, Monsieur Bouchon. You disturb us. Well, Mr. Diamond? Oh, come on, Ivan. You're taking this thing much too seriously. 
Mr. Diamond, I've said repeatedly that I like you, but that won't stop me from shooting you, if I have to. Now, you are intense, aren't you? I've risked a lot to get that stone. Let's not make it more difficult. Well, uh, you haven't asked Berta what she knows. Berta? Sure. Go ahead, ask her. All right. What do you know about the sapphire, Berta? Please! Oh, Mr. Diamond, I believe you're pulling my leg. Oh, Cleas, I've got a good answer, but I'm afraid this isn't the time. Do you have the sapphire? Mm, for want of a better word, mm, yes. Give it to me. Oh, Grandma, what a greedy voice you've developed. You're wasting time. Only in a manner of speaking. Come on, Diamond, I'm not... Hold it. Hold it where you are. <sighs> drop the gun, miss. Go ahead, drop it. Well, you certainly took your time, Fatty. I got here as fast as I could. I was just running out of words. Wasn't I, Yvonne? Mm -hmm. You know something, Mr. Diamond. Tell me, dear. I'm sure I'll hate myself in the morning. But it's funny. I still like you. Well, when we got on to it, the whole thing was really pretty simple. Yvonne and Bouchon were running a fancy smuggling racket under a cosmetics cover. Bouchon wanted to make it a one-man operation. So he tried to dissolve the partnership the hard way by killing Yvonne. It didn't work because Mockler found out about the sapphire, got in the way, and stopped the bomb intended for Yvonne. Monsieur Bouchon summed the whole thing up rather neatly on the way to the station house. He said, Mon Dieu, I should have stood in France. <laughs> Dick Powell can now be seen starring in RKO's Cry Danger. Tonight's adventure of Richard Diamond was written by Charles E. Israel with music by Frank Worth. Our director is Helen Mack. Featured in the cast were Arthur Q. Bryan, Joan Banks, James Backus, Theodore Van Elts, and Sheldon Leonard. Listen next week for another exciting transcribed adventure of Richard Diamond starring Dick Powell. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the FBI follows immediately. Stay tuned. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the American Broadcasting Company. Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. You'll, you'll remember a few weeks back we had uh, an issue where Jim Backus was in the program but not in the credits. Here we get to hear Backus and also to hear him credited. So apparently ABC made a decision to change how they did the credits for this program. Of course, this is a little bit of a different role for Backus as he's not using the, or a variation I should say, on the duty voice of Thurston Howell or Hubert Updike from uh, the Alan Young Show. It's pitched differently, and so you get a very different impression of the character. All right, well, that will actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Boston Blackie, and then next Wednesday, it's another episode of Richard Diamond. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net or by mail to P.O. Box 159 one three Boise, Idaho 83715. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and uh, check out our YouTube archive, youtube.greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.